This is part three of Newton's Principia Explained. Uh, so far we've established two things. One thing was from Galileo, which was that uh, the displacement of a falling object, assuming there's some sort of constant acceleration, is going to be uh, proportional to the acceleration times the time squared. And for our purposes, we could rephrase this as the acceleration is proportional to the displacement divided by time squared. We have from Kepler, and proved by Newton in the last one, that uh, equal areas occur in equal times, which I'm going to write this way, that time is proportional to the area swept out uh, by some kind of planet or a, or a moving object. Now, if there was no force, uh, uh, if, 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 a, if an object wasn't moving, let's say, and there was no force, uh, the object still wouldn't move. So basically, acceleration in Galileo's uh, formula is going to be uh, very similar or related to the to the force that the that the planet is pulling on the object. So I'm going to rephrase Galileo's thing as force is proportional to the displacement, how much the object moves, divided by time squared. And since time is proportional to area, the area is swept out, I'm going to rephrase it as force is proportional to displacement, how much the object moves, uh, divided by the area that the object sweeps out, um, squared. And I'm going to show you how this all relates in a geometrical picture that Newton creates. Here is a, uh, a picture, and what I've got here is a portion of a planetary orbit. So the planet has been traveling around and it's currently at point P and eventually it moves over here to, to point Q. Now, if when it was at P the sun basically stopped exerting any force, the planet would basically continue um, from P on this line which is tangent to the curve. But a, but a force does happen, and it, it pulls the planet towards the sun. And take a look. I'm going to draw in a couple of, uh, a couple of extra lines to simplify this, this picture. First of all, I'm going to draw through, through Q. <clears throat> By the way, they, the force is going from P towards S. That's, that's an assumption. I'm going to draw um, line QR, line segment QR. Line segment QR is parallel to the line of force from P towards, towards S. And in a sense, QR represents the displacement, where it moves basically from R to, to Q. R is where it wants to go, Q is where it does go, especially if Q is really close to P. RQ uh, becomes sort of the amount of that the object moves. So that's, that, that's, the, that's the displacement. Now according to uh, that rewriting of, of the Galileo rule, we could say that, that the force is proportional to the displacement over the amount of time squared. Well the force is what we're trying to figure out. We're trying to figure out what force made this happen. So we know that it's proportional. Well, the displacement is QR. Now, as far as the amount of time, it's been established already because of the equal areas and equal times law from Kepler, which was proved in the last, in part two of this uh, lecture. Um, the time is proportional to the area that this planet sweeps out as it goes from P to Q. Well, I'll draw in line QS here. 
So the area of PSQ, which has this arc as its, as its third side. Now, as P gets really, really close to Q, arc PQ is the same thing as line segment PQ. So we're going to imagine right now they're not that close together, but as they get closer together, the area does become that. So the force is proportional to QR over time squared, which is going to be QR over the area of triangle QSP squared. Well, the area of triangle QSP is one half base times height. So if I make the base SP, I can drop a perpendicular from Q and call the point where the perpendicular hits line PS point T. So the area of triangle SPQ is one half of SP times QT. And since this is proportional and not saying equal, we'll say the force is proportional to QR over the um, over the base SP times QT. This is going to be the force law that makes the uh, or enables the planet to go from P to Q. Now this is really uh, only assuming that P and Q are very very close together but for our purposes, it's, it, it's like this. So it's kind of like the impulse model, but only if P and Q are really, really close together can we say this, because only if P and Q are really, really close together is arc PQ essentially the same as line segment PQ. So Newton figured out this relationship between the force and certain line segments in this picture. I just noticed that I, that I left off squared which is real important. So now I'm going to rewrite this as it's proportional to QR over QT squared times SP squared. And this is such an important formula here that I'm actually going to end part three of this lecture early at this point. So Newton's figured out that the force required to keep uh, this planet in this orbit is going to be proportional to QR, which is displacement, how much, how much it really moves. It moved from R to Q. Um, and uh, assuming R is really, really close to P, that is. And uh, divided by the square of time, but time is like the area because the equal areas and equal times and we get this very important formula that Newton's going to build on. Just so you know in part four of this lecture series I'm going to give a summary that will get you all the way to the end of Newton's Principia without all the details but it will get to the end of at least of the relevant proposition so if you just want to watch part four you will get the basic idea to its conclusion. Then in the parts after part four, I'm going to go through the details that will justify this theorem that Newton comes up with about ellipses. That will take a bunch of parts, but you can just get to part four if you want the general idea. So don't stop watching now just because this is a lot of parts. Part four will get you to a uh, part where you get the basic idea of what Newton did. Thanks for watching.